Everybody say faith. And of the doctrine of baptism, everybody say baptism. And of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And it is these final two aspects of this scripture speaking of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment that you can find summarized in the subject of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Your Bible is a prophetic book. From Genesis 3, the words were were spoken of a coming deliverance from the curse of sin. The Lord promised that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. In Genesis chapter 3, all the way until Revelations chapter 22 and the very last scripture, the Bible is a prophetic book. And so tonight our lesson is about the second coming of Christ, but to bring context, I think it is first important for us to recognize the first coming of Jesus Christ. Everybody say the first time. There are at least 353 promises and prophecies in the Old Testament that foretold the first coming of Jesus Christ. And in this New Testament day, we gain insight and appreciation of the ministry and the manifestation of the Jewish Messiah through the written words of the Old Testament scriptures. For example, a messianic prophecy of the first coming of Jesus. And you can read it with me. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In that Old Testament scripture, we gain a a, a revelation of who Jesus was. He was wonderful. He is wonderful. He is Counselor. He is the Mighty God. Jesus is the Everlasting Father. Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Somebody said amen. Amen. Isaiah 7 and 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Turn in your book into the book of Matthew and you will find the angel said and his name shall be called Emmanuel for he shall save his people from their sin. And Micah tells us that the, 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 the coming Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And Zechariah tells us that he will be pierced. And you see time after time after time after time Jesus to the point of perfection fulfilled every messianic prophecy that was wrapped up in the Old Testament scriptures. And we can read those and say, Jesus did that. (laughs) By his stripes. How many times have you been healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ? Amen. We've been having people getting healed right around here the past few weeks. Brother BJ testified of a healing in a prayer meeting. It wasn't necessarily a huge deal, but it's a big deal to him. Brother Landon had, had an ear infection, and, and we prayed for him Sunday, and Sister Beth let us know that the Lord healed him. We have seen the Lord, that we have been healed by his stripes. And because of these Old Testament for prophetic scriptures, we can know that he was bruised. Amen. He was chastised. For me, for you, for your lost family. And and the fact that the scriptures of the Old Testament were fulfilled, it gives us confidence that the scriptures in the New Testament that yet are to be fulfilled will be fulfilled to the point, to perfection, it will be done. The scripture says, Jesus Christ himself affirmed, heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall stand Amen. Nothing of the law shall shall diminish until every jot and tittle, uh, every dot and every comma is fulfilled of the word of God. Amen. 
And so when we are to consider the second coming of Christ, we can look at Acts chapter 1. Amen. Do I have it? Yeah. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. It gives us a, 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 a recording of the things Jesus said and done just previous to his leaving the earth in a bodily form. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. And when they therefore were come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Amen. That's hard to imagine. Jesus is standing there talking to him. And while he's talking to them, amen, there is some supernatural event. The Bible describes it as a cloud. He ascended out of their midst, and they're standing there. Wow. Look at him. And he went up, I guess, to the point. To, have you ever seen like a balloon going up in the sky? And you, can you see it? Where did he go? And there were two angels that appeared. Uh, and while they looked steadfastly toward the heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven somebody say the second coming of Jesus Christ amen amen Jesus in his if you want to go back to page one he laid out some things in his earthly ministry things that he spoke of in Matthew chapter 26 verse 55 in the same hour said Jesus to the multitude are you come out against a thief with swords just prior to he him being uh, uh, betrayed I sat daily with you in the temple and you laid no hold on me and here it says but all this was done that the scripture of the prophets might be fulfilled that all the disciples forsook him and fled. You see that all throughout the New Testament. This was done, that the scripture might be fulfilled. This was done, as the prophet said. You find that throughout the New Testament, the gospel writings, that this happened because it was foretold. And it is my opinion that it is the nature of prophecy. Oftentimes, it is not to give you knowledge of something before it happens. It is to give you knowledge of it as it is happening and after it has happened. I found the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of faith that gives you a glimpse into things that are to come. Uh, and when the Lord has given me a dream or a vision, uh, oftentimes I have pondered what is the meaning of this and thought maybe I had some interpretation, but I did not fully appreciate the meaning until it happened. I can't tell you how many times as a young man the Lord gave me uh, visions and uh, as I've gotten older I've had more dreams and, and, and something would happen and my mind would say wow, <laughs> Jesus warned me about that Jesus told me about that and I believe that you see this when the disciples were writing out the gospels they, they were writing and they would say that's why he did that that's why it happened that way and so I believe there are some things in Scripture that are prophetic we may not know the full meaning of it until the day that it happens amen and so I think it is important for us not to worry over the exact interpretation of prophetic scriptures but to read them to study them and to look with anticipation and faith 
of the coming of the Lord. Jesus told his disciples, I am coming back. You see it in, throughout the parables of Jesus, the story of the ten virgins. And I wrote the text down for your study. Uh, you, the, the parable of the wheat and the tares, the parable of the twos. Two will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. The parable of the owner of the house, the parable of the talents. You find throughout the ministry of Jesus, he foretold that there was going to be a, a catching away and some would be taken and others would be left. I want to be one of those that gets taken. <laughs> I don't want to be left behind. I, I was meditating upon this subject and for myself, I grew up in a different generation I grew up in a day where there was a lot of preaching about the coming of the Lord. There was a lot of teaching about the coming of the Lord. There were films about the coming of the Lord. There were books about the coming of the Lord. There were tracts about the coming of the Lord. I remember they showed a movie. We didn't even watch movies. They showed a movie in the church about being left behind. And I have vivid memories as a young uh, a teenager and a young boy coming home and my mama being gone and thinking, oh, Jesus came and I got left behind. Does anybody ha ever have memories of having that? Jesus came and I've been left behind. There were song, there's songs written. Uh, you came one day too late. One day too late. Jesus came and you've been left behind yesterday you couldn't find time for Jesus on your mind and you got left behind oh great fear and trepidation but I recognize that some of that maybe it might have been to excess to the point that sometimes those in my generation and maybe those that followed maybe have not preached and taught with the level of intensity because maybe we just assume everybody knows what we know. But that's probably not a good way to look at it. Somebody said amen. And I just want to impress upon the hearts and the minds of everyone here from our young people that are here to our elders and all of those of you in between. Jesus is coming again. And everybody that thinks they're saved won't be saved. There will be a great reckoning in the greatest place of sadness for a person to be to think they were saved and find they were left behind. I don't want to be like that, do you? Matthew chapter 24 and verse 38, For as it was in the days that were before the flood, that were they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the, the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what hour and would have known what watch the thief would have come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house being broke up. Therefore, everybody say therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh who then is faithful and a wise servant whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is the servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Amen. Jesus is coming and he is coming and the Jesus that's coming in the clouds is not the Jesus that is being preached in many churches today. He is coming with vengeance and great judgment and he is going to judge the unbeliever he's going to judge the disobedient he is going to judge the fearful and the unbelieving there is coming great judgment upon the world 
If you don't believe me, go home and look at your Bible or pull it up uh, on your browser and listen and read to the, to the 22 chapters of the book of Revelation and get a picture. Jesus gave us a whole book dedicated to the prophecy of Jesus Christ and his second coming and all that will transpire and it would do us all well to read it and to consider it. In fact, I have Revelations chapter 1 and verse 1 on page 4. If you'd like to turn there, we can read a few of the verses. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and all the things which he saw. Blessed is he, this is it, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. The blessing is not uh, relegated to your understanding. The, the blessing isn't relegated uh, uh, upon those that can explain it and teach it. The blessing of the book of Revelation is for those that will read it and hear it. Amen. Read it and hear it. If you have a Bible app, I encourage you. Amen. Open up your Bible app. It'll read it to you. And listen to Revelations chapter 1 and Revelations chapter 2. You may not understand it, but you cannot listen to the book of Revelation and walk away with thinking that Jesus is a great big Santa Claus. The Lord is going to, <laughs> I don't want to be left behind. I want to go to heaven with the righteous saints of God. Amen. And I want God to help me to reach others that as of yet have not been born again because heaven's going to be great and hell is going to be terrible. And I know me and I believe this about you. You want to go to heaven. We need to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen, you don't want to be left behind. Amen, you find 1 Corinthians 1 and 7 says we're waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 19, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. Amen, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming. Everybody say the second coming. The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a lot of scriptures tonight. And I do not plan on trying to exegete all of these scriptures. But I will read some of them with you. And you can read them with me as we read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for the day shall not come except there come a fallen away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that that would know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Amen. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's an incredibly powerful scripture, but I said I wasn't going to exegete it all. Amen. But you can, we, we might, we might, you can ask me about it later. Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan will with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because, what's it say? 
because they received not the love of the truth they sh that they might be saved. If you love the truth, you can be saved. But because they received not a love of the truth that they might be saved, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And I feel like an old preacher. I feel like I need to have it. This needs to be in black and white tonight. Amen. I've got the big old black glasses. Amen. Amen. And maybe a little more, uh, 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 what's that stuff they put in their hair back then? A little dab will do you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said amen. Preacher lost where he's reading. Amen. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which hath loved us hath given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Jesus is coming again. Can you say that with me? Jesus is coming again. Amen. I want to be ready. How about you? If you're not ready, you need to get ready. Amen. It's time for us to recognize that you look at the things that are happening in the world. Amen. There is literally a danger of a nuclear war. There is literally a danger of the world gathering themselves together to fight against Israel. This isn't just some imagination. This isn't just some biblical prophecy. It is played out in our eyes and our ears. We are living in one of the most prophetically significant times. And if we want to be saved, we better get serious about living for God. He's coming back for a holy church, a holy people. Amen. We, we, we Praise God. Amen. We therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, persuade we men. I think one of the greatest gifts God could give any of us is to give us a revelation of hell. Amen. We can read about heaven all day, but I'm telling you, we need to recognize that hell is hot and it's horrible and it's forever. And either you're going to be saved or you're going to be lost. There is no middle ground. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 1 and we'll see how far we read. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days. Everybody say last days. Scoffers walking after their own lust, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willingly ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved... Look at your neighbor say, beloved. Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. Come on, somebody. But his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Everybody say, uh, 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 President Trump said, uh, uh, fire and fury. Can you imagine if we start shooting off nukes and Russia starts shooting off nukes and China starts shooting off nukes and India starts shooting off nukes? Do we know what we're playing with? Fire. 
I read that there was some concern with the nuclear scientists when they began to test these nuclear bombs. They were concerned that it would start a chain reaction, that it would be more than one explosion, but it would create a chain reaction where it would be a continual breaking up of other atoms and causing more explosions. Amen. Could it be that the way that heaven and earth shall pass away, it could be that great time where the war of wars comes and man uh, in, in its, that spirit of antichrist, that spirit of iniquity, it could go away that we, that fast. That fast. Now we know any one of us could die tomorrow. Amen. I, I think I still got something to do. So I I better drive careful. <laughs> Amen. Trust in the Lord and believe the Lord can take care of me. But you know, none of us are promised tomorrow. We ain't got to die in the World War III. Amen. We better be ready for whenever the Lord calls our name. And that could be now. It could be 30 years from now. The Lord can do whatever he wants to do. But we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot, everybody say cannot, inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall, what's it say? Shall all be changed in a moment. <laughs> you need to underline this in your Bible. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible shall must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. Come on, somebody. Hmm. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? First Thessalonians chapter 4. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming, everybody say the second coming, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Everybody say clouds. clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That scripture in the book of Acts, the apostles who had not yet received the Holy Ghost, who were told to go to Jerusalem and wait until they had been endued with power from on high, they watched as Jesus ascended into heaven. And immediately after the ascension of Jesus Christ, the greatest miracle that had ever happened up to that, up to creation was Jesus poured out his spirit and he put the spirit of the living God inside of mortal men and women come on somebody and I believe that the Bible teaches that those that he comes back for the second time will be those that have received that spirit of resurrection amen that when Jesus comes back there's going to be a an activation Amen. That trumpet sounds. Oh, Gabriel's going to put his horn, amen, to his lips. And we're going to be getting up out of here. Amen. It could be just any moment. It could be at night or noon. We don't know just when he's coming, but we know he's coming soon. I can say with fond assurance, this old world is not my home, but one of these days you're going to look for me. And praise God, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be gone in the twinkling of an eye. I'm going to be gone. I won't have time to say goodbye. I'm going to be gone. 
Could be while I'm singing this song. I'm going to be gone and it won't be long. I'm going to be, going to be gone. You want to help me sing some more, Sister Phillips? Come on now. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Mm. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. I was telling a pastor friend of mine, I said, there are so many scriptures. I could literally teach on this subject. I could do a two-week revival and do two hours every night. The scripture is so full and so uh, clear that there is coming a second coming of Jesus Christ. And truth be known, that is our hope. <laughs> Amen. I love having great church like we had last Wednesday and we had Sunday and, and like we're having right now. I love church. I love my church family. But this isn't our hope. Our hope is, amen, that great getting up morning. Amen. When, the, when, when we will stand and worship the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever and ever. What a glorious day. What a glorious forever that will be. Forever. Forever and ever. Amen. Can we pray in the name of Jesus? Help us to search our hearts. If there is anything in me, Lord Jesus, that would prevent me at your coming, Lord Jesus, God, if there is any, any, anything in my heart, anything in my mind, anything in my life, anything in my attitude, anything, Lord Jesus, that I need to get right, Lord, I want to make it right, Lord, verbally and spiritually and prayerfully even now, God, forgive me. Cleanse me. Help me, O oh God, to be humble before you. Help me, Lord Jesus, to, to love my brother and sister in the Lord. Help me, O oh God, uh, uh, to be passionate, Lord, about reaching those that you died to save. Lord Jesus, we pray for a baptism of, of the spirit of evangelism to grip our hearts, that you would go with us to see the, the kingdom added to you, that we could take someone with us when you come to take us back. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I encourage you, take this, read it, study it, meditate upon it. If you have any questions, you can Facebook me. Amen. You can text me, you can call me. And I would love to uh, answer any questions you may have.